Howdy folks, thank you for tuning in. And as always, if it's the first time watching our channel or you're a regular viewer, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. So today we're going to have a quick look at the Hilkinson Skyline 20x80 binoculars. And if you want to support our channel, as I know a number of you have done already, you can purchase from the link in the description below. So observational binoculars. So these are designed for long distance terrestrial use or even looking at ships at sea, etc or astronomy and uh, I'm today going to concentrate quickly on astronomy and what you can see with it but first of all I'll mention that you do get some quite evident chromatic aberration with these <coughs> excuse me um, there's, there's um, some blue and red uh, colour fringe on, on high contrast subjects but don't let that put you off because the clarity through these with those big 80mm objective lenses nice quality BAK4 prisms and multi-coated optics compared to y y your smaller 15 or 20 times 50 binoculars the, the clarity through these is absolutely superb with very good edge to edge sharpness and one thing I'll well a few things I mentioned first these are 80 millimeter binoculars so they are just under two kilograms so as I've got now you will need to put them on a sturdy tripod if, if using for astronomy but they can be used handheld for short periods as I did with my recent observing session with these and I'll mention that um, as, I, as I go along. One thing I will point out that these are still uh, I think it's about 17 millimeters I believe and so you can view, view them without the eye cups folded down but what I would recommend is folding these eye cups down they are quite soft easy to do reason for that is because if you're looking at astronomical objects and it's mounted on the tripod if your eyes touch those eye cups it will make the binoculars shake uh, believe me and so have the eye cups twisted uh, folded down whether you're using glasses or not and that will make for a much better observing session when you're looking at the night sky compared to a telescope you, you uh, well in, in particular starter telescopes the contrast and the field of view you get through these will be far superior there's no central obstruction like you get with reflector telescopes so with all that in mind what did I look at in my little observing session handheld and believe me doing a technique what you call star hopping you can very very quickly find yourself some nice objects to look in the night sky um, if you want you can actually connect a red dot finder to these binoculars and um, you can purchase the Celestron RSR adapter if you would like to do that but believe me things in the night sky are very easy to find so what I did first was I looked at the constellation Sagitta and for those who know just go up and right from Sagitta using star hopping techniques and I came across a star cluster called the Coat Hanger. You may have heard of it, you may have seen photographs of it. With these, compared to my even my 12-inch Dobsonian telescope with a reasonably wide angle eyepiece, I, I could get in the full field of view the whole, the whole asterism, as, as it's called, uh, which is an asterism is a shape within a constellation. And this star cluster called the Coat Hanger, when you look through binoculars at it, you'll realise why it's called a coat hanger because that's what it looks like looking almost three-dimensional there in the night sky and it was an absolute joy to watch and um, as you'll notice I go along you'll soon realise that if you're starting out in astronomy there's more to look at than the moon and Jupiter there's so many rich field areas to look at and while I'm looking at Sagitta I, I saw the cluster M71 a little bit more tricky but but it was there and, to, and then again using the technique called star hopping what I did I went up from Sagitta and I looked at something called the Dumbbell Nebula you, you may have seen it in the photographs and thought you can only see that with a telescope but no with these it was easy the, the nebula probably sh um, looked larger than the moon with the naked eye and it was really really bright and I'll mention as well, anyone that knows where I live, it is very, very, very 
heavily light polluted. I've got a river wharf on one side and I've got sunny scunny on the other side with the steelworks that go along with it. Lovely glow in the orange glow in the night sky and also my my eyes were not dark adapted and I could still point up the night sky and see the Dumbbell Nebula very very easily. Then turning to Pegasus again using the star hopping technique I saw a global cluster called Messier 15. Um, again you don't need a telescope for that I found and the you know using star hopping techniques from from the square of Pegasus out to literally two or three stars along and there it was shining bright and you couldn't see the individual stars but it was very very clear to see and then of course moving backwards into Andromeda well, I'd look at the Andromeda galaxy but not only that I could see NGC 205 which is its sister galaxy or one of them very very easily all in the same field of view from and from there on in i went up and this is this uh, all in about 15 minutes this observing session and from the andromeda galaxy i went to perseus and i looked at the the double star cluster and th that is absolutely stunning through these binoculars and while I was in the area, turning to Cygnus, I had a look at a double star called 31 Cygni and it comes under another name as well, which escapes me, I do apologise, but the, the colours were absolutely stunning through these. And on the subject of Cygnus, on the same night, I also looked at Alberio, the double star. Again, you don't need a telescope for that, it's a wide enough double star for you to enjoy it through these and I'm, I'm guessing everything that I've described in this quick observing session you will see better through this set of binoculars than you will a number of, not all, a number of standard budget 114mm reflectors or 70mm refractors and um, especially if they've got their stock eyepieces on. So that's a quick look at the Hilkinson Skyline 20 times 80 binoculars. I'll leave all the specifications below, but believe me, if you're starting out in astronomy and you're struggling to find things in the night sky using a telescope, especially if it's a Newtonian and the image is upside down and back to front, and you might get frustrated and struggle to find things in the night sky, then consider a set of binoculars like this for starting out. And then if you get a telescope down the line, they can complement each other, have them set up one this set of binoculars here on a tripod, a telescope next to it, and look at the same object. Compare so you can see the wide field version through the binoculars and the more detailed close up view through the telescope. But I'm pretty sure every time you'll find the images through these better. And the, the odd star party that I've been to, when I've had a set of binoculars on a tripod similar to this or bigger, people always end up looking through the binoculars and I think that says it all. So as always thank you very much for watching, uh, thank you for supporting our channel and check out the link in the description below.